In this report, cracking the kooky code of hydrogen, the deep dive into your comments stemming from my recent Hyundai Nexo long distance driving world record report. You'd best grab a beverage because we could be here quite some time. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you can just click the card that's up there now, dude. Gratified by the tsunami of comments flowing from that Nexo Distance Driving World Record report. Lots of views out there too, and not entirely nutty either. So thank you sincerely if you took part in the chat. I did try to respond to as many comments as possible, especially from the opinionated assholes. I do love them above all else. I'll link to that report just about there where that other link just was, but the short version is Hyundai Nexo set a world record for hydrogen distance driving, almost like 900 kilometres or something, from almost civilization in Melbourne all the way to Dingo Piss Creek deep in the great Australian fuck all. Over to you on this now. Yeah, let's just skip right over the first law of thermodynamics. And while we're at it, the cryogenic process and heat and energy displaced to get to minus 200 degrees. And damn sure don't mention how many people's air you have to steal so those 33 people in that room can have it. Do the friggin' math math. Professor? Oh, thank you so much, Dana. I did enjoy your comment. And I do attempt to preserve the native grammar and punctuation in every comment so that every nuance may be adequately conveyed. Pro tip, however. There is no cryonic storage of hydrogen gas in a Nexo. Not in, not on board, not even frigging nearby, all the way to the creek, okay? That would be impractical. The car, in fact, uses three 52-litre tanks, they're polymer and carbon fibre wrapped, if memory serves, to store about six kilos of compressed hydrogen gas at about 10,000 psi, which is also 700 bar ish for the metricado among us. From a cost effectiveness perspectives, hydrogen fuel cell cars are a waste of money. Yeah, they are, and so are battery EVs, which cost 50% more than internal combustion engine equivalents, and they deliver about half the cruising range, and they take a billion times longer to refill. But it's really just not all about cost effectiveness, is it? There's a great deal to be said for unfucking the status quo of the energy economy. Sustainable mobility is an admirable goal in and of itself. And yeah, it is going to cost a bit more, particularly initially. You and the friendly Geordies are making journalism real again with actual facts and some great comedic banter. Marcus, I share your enthusiasm for Jordan's fine work on YouTube and humour is an excellent device to keep people engaged and jam the point home ultimately. And by home, I mean, of course, into the digestive tract of your average asshole politician. Friendly Geordie's rocks, in my view, especially as the Deputy Premier of New South Wales is now suing him for defamation. Hashtag respect, Geordie. Badge of honour right there, I'd suggest, for making John Barillaro look like a petty ass clown, as they say in America. Right there. So well done personal opinion. I understand hydrogen is in its infancy. What would it cost to buy the circa six kilos Hyundai used for the trip? I'd assume with technology and demand it would become cheaper. And what would a real world range be, say, at normal highway speeds of 100 k's an hour? Easy answer first, Rodney. The official range for the Nexo is 666 kilometres, so you'll get about that more or less for normal driving. Maybe a bit less, who knows. The ANU recently put the cost of green hydrogen in Australia at something between three bucks eighteen and three dollars eighty per kilo, and they say it's looking more like two bucks by the end of the decade. 
and one kilo is enough to take you about 100 kilometers in a Nexo. So the fuel itself is not actually that expensive. It's the infrastructure rollout that's a major hurdle. And we'd also have to know more about the in-service application of fuel cells in cars, like for owners, long-term, as ownership propositions, right? Mainly because the fuel cell itself is very intolerant of contamination of the inlet air. But when it comes to tolerance for contamination, it's fair to say that a modern diesel fuel injection system is fairly friggin' intolerant of that as well. So... There's that. What rate per day of hydrogen gas production can be anticipated from each approximate 350 watt rooftop solar panel? Okay, so stick with me on this. Numbers are going to be involved here, all right? Electrolysis is about 70% efficient if you do it really well. So if you've got a panel producing 350 watts of electricity and the sun shines for four hours a day, somewhat conservatively, that's like 1.4 kilowatt hours of electrical energy per day. And once you electrolyze water with that energy, you'd get about one kilowatt hour of hydrogen energy because of the efficiency lost through the electrolyzer. And hydrogen has an energy density of 39 kilowatt hours per kilo. So that's about 26 grams of hydrogen per panel per four hours of bright sunlight. So about 40 such panels would give you about one kilo of hydrogen every day, which is roughly the energy stored in a 130 kilo battery, okay? Batteries are very heavy and hydrogen is very light for energy equivalents. It's enough to drive about 100 kilometers, that one kilo, which is, as I said, 60 miles, more or less. America. Of course, you'd have to compress it to something like 10,000 PSI as well, and some energy is obviously consumed when you do that, and let's ballpark that at about losing 35% or so doing that. Still not too bad, I'd suggest, as industrial processes go. And before you ask, fuel cells are roughly twice as efficient as internal combustion, but less efficient than batteries in terms of tank to wheel efficiency. Hi oh John, where about is Dingo Piss Creek? Because we want to hook up our three and a half ton Taj Mahal trailer and go there, lol. I will brook no disrespect of the creek. Dingo Piss Creek is a paradoxical Australian state of existence. Nobody can show you Dingo Piss Creek on a map, okay? You have to believe. To an Aussie, the creek is just the same as the Force is to a Jedi or the Matrix is to the One. Dingo Piss Creek is everywhere and it is nowhere. You can't explain Dingo Piss Creek, but you can feel it. If you've lived here, you've felt it your entire life. Like, dude, don't think you're there. No, you're there. I can only show you the door, and you're the one who's going to have to swim on through, and you have to let it all go, like fear, doubt, and disbelief. Gone. Take the yellow pill, dude. Stay here in Wonderland, and I'll show you how deep the creek really goes. And if that's not worth a friggin' sub, I don't know what is. Morpheus is God, after all. Like, Pretty much. G'day John, what are the chances of Hyundai letting you do a test review on the Nexo? Yeah, probably, like if I get down on my knees and lube up, but what would be the point? You can't actually buy one, and even if you could, where the sugar-frosted F are you going to refuel it? Pro tip, okay, driving it is gonna be just like driving a battery EV, cause the fuel cell is just another way of making electricity. I think hydrogen has a role to play, but it's suffering from a lack of vision and commitment and ability to execute like, say, your best mate Elon Musk. What is needed is a true blue dinkum Aussie to get someone to hold their beer and get on with it. How about Gina Reinhardt? She's got a few billion to spare and the actual balls to do it. Yeah, Big G does have those balls, metaphorically. Three of them, I think, but... <laughs> I'm not going to fact check that. And blank about 600 metres away from my in-laws in Brisbane, as the dingo pisses, used to make hydrogen via electrolysis. Used to. He said he'd blow himself up one day. He did. Yeah, DIY hydrogen at home is really not something I could recommend doing it. 
good conscience, especially not if you collect the oxygen gas in the same container as the hydrogen gas. Perfect stoichiometric mixture, good to go. Like the phrase, girl who can't say no, just springs to mind. Also, uh, to all of you who suggested carrying oxygen gas as well as hydrogen in an exo, thereby obviating the need for air filtration, like, where exactly are you going to put the 80-ish litres of oxygen tanks inside the nexo? Packaging dilemma right there. Like, riddle me that. Pro tip. The only reason they carried oxygen for the fuel cells in Apollo was because... No oxygen gas in the vacuum of space, obviously. People have got 1,000 kilometres out of a single charge in a Hyundai Kona EV like the one you had by hypermiling it. It used just a fraction of the green electricity to charge that than it did to produce the green hydrogen required for the Nexo. I do note more than a bit of pro-battery partisanship in the comments. Also this one. Why not just plug a battery electric vehicle into the solar panels and save the trouble of the electrolyzer? Going back to first principles on this, humanity needs mobility. Like, that's an absolute. Because we don't all want suddenly to go back to the 12th century. So inconvenient. And it's pretty clear the structure of the mobility game needs to change towards renewables rapidly. Like, we do have to embrace this. Battery EVs have their advantages, certainly, and they're pretty much unbeatable from a tank to wheel perspective on efficiency, but it does take a shitload of energy to make the batteries. Like, to put that in perspective, it's about 350 kilowatt hours per kilowatt hour of battery storage capacity in the ballpark. So, for a battery like the 64 kilowatt hour battery in the Kona EV, it takes about 20 megawatt hours of electricity just to make the battery. And if you do it in a place like Poland or northeastern China, that energy is about three quarters coal fired. And this is a huge CO2 impost to get over to start saving the planet, especially if you run the battery EV on coal-fired electricity, like most of here in Schittsville. It just is. And I am not anti-EV. I'm just pro-fact on all of this. The details actually really matter on EVs and fuel cells and anything else touted as outwardly sustainable. One of the biggest problems with batteries is, of course, scaling up the production to global mobility scale, meaning scaling up the heavy metal production for the electrolytes and the aluminium, for the housings that the batteries fit in, etc. Also, batteries kind of fall over for heavy vehicles and aircraft owing to the low energy density and the high mass. They're called facts, okay? Nobody has to like them, but they're still facts. Fuel cells have a particular place in the future mobility transport mix. Much less energy is embodied in a PEM-type fuel cell and three polymer and carbon fibre-wrapped hydrogen tanks, frankly. Entertaining as always, and for once, I agree with many of your points. Yes, we do have an opportunity to be a hydrogen superpower with vast areas of land suitable for renewable generation. Couple of questions. What is your understanding of durability of the fuel cell and what, if any, issues are there with them? First and foremost, I'd suggest that purity is vitally important of the hydrogen, which is kind of easy to manage, but also of the inlet air. So effective filtration is going to be a must here and those filters are going to need changing and I can't tell you how often or how expensive they might be. I'm hardly a fuel cell expert, like hardly anyone is. I think you probably have to approach Al Wars. He's probably got that one too. But it seems that the membrane in the fuel cell stack is going to need replacement at some point. And it's a kind of major component. And if you wanted to look at that like a rough equivalent, it would be like changing a timing belt in an internal combustion engine in terms of Inconvenience and complexity, I presume. John Boy is an engineer. He needs to come up with a totally new power source that is full renewable energy suitable. How about it, John Boy? It's time to really get those frazzled grey cells working again. Michael, 
You've been watching too much science fiction, dude. There is no new source of energy. Things like this don't actually exist. That's just a fantasy from the minds of people who haven't lived their lives to the point of achieving basic scientific literacy. Quick question, what volume does 6.27 kilos of hydrogen gas occupy in litres? If my calculations are correct, doubtful, it's about 160 litres at 700 bar. If that's close-ish, it's the same as a good old Baffus tank from Falcon GTHO or E49 Charger. Yeah, it's about that size. The tanks are a little bit more technically complex though. Like in practice, in an EXO, there are three 52 litres Liter tanks at roughly 700 bar or 10,000 psi. If you want to know the exact volume for the technically literate, just use PV equals NRT. There's that. And no, I'm not going to explain it. Did they leave the car way out there near Dingo P Creek with an empty H tank? How did it get back to civilization? Yeah, I think they just left it there creekside and presumably the locals just burnt it one Friday evening for entertainment. That's the way disposal typically rolls in the outback. I'm looking forward to the report on the bonfire. That could be entertaining. Like, after all, dude, imagine the CO2 from sticking it on a flatbed diesel belching truck and carrying it all the way back to quote unquote civilization. What was missing was how much CO2 and other pollutants that hydrogen for that trip caused. I am sure there is a formula out there, not sure if it's public accessible. Yarn, yarn, yarn. No pollutants during the trip, obviously, except from the convoy of support vehicles, which I presume accompanied the Nexa. <laughs> If the hydrogen came from methane, then CO2 would have been prolific during the manufacture of the hydrogen. You have to strip the carbon from the methane and emit that as CO2 in two very energy intensive processes. The first one occurs at about 1100 degrees C and the second at about 300. It's called steam reforming methane and Google knows more than us all about that. So just Google it if you'd like to know more. If the hydrogen actually came from electrolyzing water using renewable electricity, then CO2 emissions were effectively zero. But in practice, obviously, you'd need to amortize the CO2 embodied in the array and the electrolyzer and the other infrastructure used to manufacture the hydrogen. So there'd be a correction there somewhere. The water in a Nexo, the, the water it poops out, is chemically pure, okay? And there are, as I understand it, no other emissions whatsoever. Would you not need demineralized water to produce hydrogen on an ongoing basis? So adding in a vacuum distillation or reverse osmosis process to the inconvenient thermodynamic laws consequences? Fresh water is actually a very scarce resource on Earth. I think it's only 3% of all the water on the planet. So yeah, it is a sparse resource, but it is possible to electrolyze seawater. And yeah, there are some technical impediments to doing that, like chlorine corrosion, but it's definitely doable. Fresh water is an admittedly limited resource, and I don't know what the impacts would be of scaling up to planet level mobility transportation with fuel cells, what effect that would have on freshwater resources. Probably not that much. ACT government, 20 Nexos, one charging station based on a hydrogen gas electrolyzer, solar power from Neo N. The ratepayer is buying the lot at an amortized rate of about 25 bucks a kilo, in my opinion. Millions of dollars burned at the green altar. This evangelical shit just doesn't fly. Like, not to me, okay? Do you want to make the earth uninhabitable or invest now in the future of humanity? That is the basic proposition. This is the starting line that we're all on. There is no third choice, so you have to decide. Climate change is real. Humanity is causing it. There is absolutely no doubt. Geopolitically, I would be overjoyed to see Australia as a hydrogen gas producing superpower. That would, in my opinion, make Australia less shit. Like, a lot less shit. So there's that. 6.27 kilos, is that a lot of volume? A full tank in that car? I thought there may be a way to use liquid ammonia as a medium. Hydrogen is the way. Dude, 
It was a distance record. Rule one with automotive driving distance records is start with a full tank. So yeah, ammonia dense phase conveying is in its infancy. I think the CSIRO developed that. And frankly, it's more suited to bulk transportation of hydrogen, right? Like for overseas exports. With water being a limited resource, why can't hydrogen electric vehicles capture the water produced and return it to the filling point to be reused in the hydrogen production process? reducing the amount of water needed to be taken from the environment. Alan, Jesus, dude, the emitted water evaporates, right? It just goes out onto the road and goes up there, turns into clouds and becomes rain and then magically falls out of the sky. Guilt-edged opportunity right there to catch it and go again. I covered this at school, dude. Perhaps you were asleep. Just wondering, as I've never bothered to research, if anyone has the answer on the tips of his fingers. Do hydrogen cars need a little battery for storing electricity for peak accelerations, or the fuel cell can produce it all in real time when you step on the hydrogen gas? Do you credit here, okay? This was an excellent question from Bruno, and I did fuck up my first response to him in the comments, so sorry about that. Then I did some more research, and apparently there is a high voltage battery in the Nexo, and it is located between the rearmost and the middle of the three hydrogen tanks. It's under the cargo bay floor, and roughly between the rear wheels. It's a lithium polymer battery, 64 cells in total, and each cell is three and three quarters volts a piece in series for a total of 240 volts and 6.5 amp hours of total capacity, which would make it a 1.5 kilowatt hour battery. Presumably that's there for regenerative braking and instantaneous type acceleration demands. It's about as big in the ballpark as the battery in a non plug-in hybrid. Roughly how many square meters of solar panels would be required to generate enough power to produce enough hydrogen to fill up a tank in a car? If Hyundai covered the roof of its HQ in solar panels and used the power to make hydrogen, would that be sufficient to fill up 10 cars? 100? Looking at this somewhat simplistically, okay, and there are several assumptions in play, so you could tweak it one way or the other, but here's how it plays for me, okay? It takes 237 kilojoules of energy to dissociate one mole of water. And if you didn't study, a mole is like a standard chemistry packet containing a fixed number of molecules, like a lot. Look it up. Google knows everything. M-O-L-E, right? That gives you one mole of hydrogen gas, which weighs two grams per mole, so it's pretty light stuff. And every kilo of hydrogen gas is like 237 divided by two, so let's call that about 120 megajoules of energy. And a 6.27 kilos of hydrogen gas in a Nexo, so that's about... 750 megajoules right there, and you've got to factor in the electrolyzer being about 70% efficient, so that's about a billion joules to electrolyze the water, and you'd be losing a third of the energy ballpark, compressing it up, so you'd need about like 1.5 billion joules of photovoltaic electricity on the input side to make the hydrogen to fill one Nexo, I'd suggest. And the way God and Maxwell made sunlight, right? It's about one kilowatt per square meter of incident solar radiation. And a solar cell is about ballpark 20% efficient. So just for convenience, if we count on five hours of incident sunlight per day, that would be one kilowatt hour per day or 3.6 million joules per square meter of solar array. So you'd need about... Um, 1,500 million joules divide by 3.6 million joules equals about uh, 400 square metres of array to fill one Nexo per day, which is, when you think about it, it's a pretty stupid metric because the average car here in Shitsville only drives about 40 kilometres per day, so that's really enough for about 17 Nexos per day of average driving. I don't think I left anything out there, but you know, hit me up if I did. So 
hypothetically, if you had a fleet of 20 Nexos, you could certainly run them from an array on the rooftop of a business which is big enough to operate 20 vehicles because there'd be enough roof up there, okay? Definitely doable, totally off the grid, doable now, you could do it today. Every time I hear hydrogen fuel cells, there's always an argument about the Hindenburg and or a large earth shattering kaboom. Am I right in thinking hydrogen would either just escape or burn off if ruptured in an accident? Okay, so hydrogen in a tank at 10,000 PSI is probably safer than gasoline, all things considered. 50 litres of hydrogen, 50 litres of gasoline. I'd rather be in the hydrogen car on fire, oddly enough. I'd rather be in neither of them, but if it was a binary proposition, I'll go with the hydrogen car. Hydrogen actually dissipates very quickly, and although it is quite flammable, it's unlikely to detonate, like explode. It's likely to burn rather than explode. Much more likely just to deflagrate, technically, and also because it's in a proper tank and not wrapped in oil-soaked canvas like the Hindenburg, it's unlikely to be quite as serious if it does burn. And of course, it's not hundreds of feet in the air while it's on fire. You can just open the doors and sort of evac the Nexo if it comes to that. In the context of disaster management, it's a net positive too that we're not actually also carrying compressed oxygen gas, just saying. Have a look at what happened with uh, Apollo 1 ultimately in there. Apollo 1's last uh, mission, which was on the launch pad, it was just a test and bad result. A hydrogen fire is actually easier to fight for the firefighters than a lithium ion battery fire, for example, because in a battery, when the electrolyte destabilizes, it tends to decompose into partly oxygen gas, which is why you simply cannot extinguish a lithium battery EV fire. So there's that to consider as well. And don't get me wrong on this, hydrogen gas is quite dangerous stuff, just like all other fuels, including coal, for example, but the risks can be easily managed to the point of being quite acceptable, beyond acceptable. Gasoline, for example, is very dangerous stuff, and yet we all think nothing of being anywhere near it because of how well the risk is managed, not because gasoline is in any way a benign substance. Six kilos of hydrogen weighs similars to 10 litres of conventional fuel. Why don't they put 50 kilos of hydrogen to simulate a standard tank of Hilux fuel for spectacular driving range to get headlines and capture the imagination of... Dingo Piss Creek adventurers everywhere. Now that you mention it, Nick, I cannot wait for the corporate welfare addicts at ARB, and no reference to individuals is made, for them to dream up a long-range tank for the 2040 Hilux hydrogen. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Pro tip, okay? 50 kilos of hydrogen would require 24... 50-ish litre storage tanks on board. So two dozen 50-litre tanks. I'd like to see that. Or perhaps a dirty, big, Priscilla-style balloon just overhead. Wouldn't that be nice? Due to the low thermal efficiency of an ICE and relatively high efficiency of the fuel cell EV, Hyundai claimed that using hydrogen made from steam reforming gas is a lower CO2 exercise than running a petrol ICE. I think overall the tank to wheel efficiency of a fuel cell EV is about double the efficiency of ICE, okay? Hyundai's free to claim whatever they want, obviously, but starting with methane and ending with transportation is a kind of thermodynamic fraud and certainly a kind of sustainability fraud. The electrolysis of water to produce hydrogen and the compression of the hydrogen for use in a car is quite inefficient, perhaps losing up to half the energy. Fuel cells are also less efficient than conventional batteries. Consequently, unless your electricity is very cheap, it is much better to use your electricity directly in an electric car. Hydrogen is, though, a potential solution to long-distance truckers and air flight. What other kind of flight is there, Alan? Space, I suppose there's space flight. Anyway, internal combustion batteries and fuel cells, they all have their place in the future. That's a given. It's not all about efficiency, dude. It's about the application and whether or not this is achievable and a good result in total. It's about things like the viability of rolling out billions upon billions of batteries at scale and the environmental impacts of doing that. Like, 
What shits me here, just in closing, right, is the vested interests and the statements they make. Electric Jesus and Volkswagen, they're both very keen to rubbish hydrogen, I note, but only because of their vested interest in battery EVs, not because of some intrinsic invalidity in the use of hydrogen as part of the future transport mix. Toyota, right, very keen to rubbish plug-in hybrids here in Australia, principally because they're not offering one for sale here. Battery zealots out there, very keen to rubbish internal combustion and hydrogen. And then there are the owners of these vehicles, okay, who are almost intolerable. Like, two out of three battery EV owners will brook absolutely no criticism of what I would call their Tesla shit heap, no matter how valid that criticism might be. They have joined a friggin' cult, and as we all know, rule number one of any cult is the cult may not be criticised. Internal combustion advocates are very keen to shit-can anyone who thinks sustainability is important because... Apparently, if you ask them, CO2 is just plant food, and all those scientists are wrong. It's very difficult for average people to form a balanced view in this domain because of this cacophony of vested interest bullshit, right? Which is why scientific literacy is so important for average people. Scientific literacy, now that I think about it, is a modern-day bullshit detector. It's a universal solvent of sorts, no matter how half-baked the bullshit. So if you've got kids, I implore you, cattle prod them if necessary, to remain awake in mathematics and science classes. It is your solemn duty as a parent. Like, do it. My other website, parentingexpert.com, for more tricks like this, click now, because we frankly would not want them growing up to be lawyers, or even worse, politicians. <laughs>